Good morning again, church. Today we gather seeking solace and guidance as we navigate the often turbulent seas of uncertainty. The world we live in is filled with constant change, unforeseen challenges, and moments of ambiguity, ambiguity that can leave us feeling adrift. It is in times like these that our faith becomes an anchor, grounding us in the midst of life's storms. In the book of Proverbs, chapter three, verses five through six, we find a timeless message that resonates with the essence of our theme today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make, your straight, he will make straight your paths. As we explore the depths of uncertainty, let us embark on a journey of understanding, trusting that our faith will illuminate the way forward. In this sermon, we will delve into the nature of uncertainty, its impact on our lives, and the wisdom our faith offers to navigate through it. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. First, let's talk about the nature of uncertainty. What is uncertainty? Well, according to Oxford, uncertainty is the state of things being uncertain. It's not very helpful, is it? But then it went on to list some synonyms, unpredictability, unreliability, and riskiness. When it comes to life, uncertainty can be described as the constant ebb and flow of events or circumstances. Life can seem like it's always in flux, leaving us with the feeling of uncertainty, of unpredictability, of unreliability, and riskiness. But life being in this way, being unpredictable and uncertain, is a universal truth. We don't control as much as we would like to control. We can't control what other people do or say, even though their actions and words affect us. Oftentimes, we just have to go with the flow. While just going with the flow may seem uncomfortable, we can find peace in the midst of uncertainty by surrendering to God. When we surrender our wills to God, we leave whatever happens up to him. We allow him to make the decisions for us. That way we can't go wrong. Because as believers, we know we serve a God who can do no wrong and only has our best interest at heart. God wants what is best for us and by surrendering our wills to him, we get just that, the best. We can embrace the unknown because we know who is working the situation out on our behalf. We desire to be in control. That's a fact. We want to control what we do, what others do, and how people behave. We want to control how others drive while we're driving, thinking, why can't they just hurry up so I can get to where I'm going? We want to control people in the market thinking, why can't they just move their cart so I can get by easier? Why is that? Why do we want to be in control so much? It's because we don't like uncertainty. If we are in control, then things won't be so uncertain, right? But remember, uncertainty can be alleviated by trusting the Lord. We don't need to be in control. We need to relinquish control to God. Letting go of our need to control everything around us can be liberating. It's like when a small child, a baby even, relies totally on the parent for everything. <coughs> Excuse me, I've had a cough that I just can't shake. Despite all the crying and yelling, babies really don't have any control to exercise. The parent is in control. And well taking care of babies are assured that the parent will provide them with what they need when they need it. Well, we are the babies and God is the parent. We need to fully trust God with our uncertainties because he can provide the certainty we desire. Now let's discuss the role of faith in the midst of uncertainty. We know that we can rely on God in uncertain times. Well, that's faith. It's faith that allows you to surrender your will to the Lord because you believe, no, you know, that God will handle everything. As believers, we know this, right? We know this, right? As believers, amen. Faith is the anchor that settles you in uncertain times. 
but don't take my word for it. There are plenty of scriptures that talk about faith. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, it says, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Luke chapter one, verse 37 says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Second Corinthians five, verse seven says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one says, now faith is the insurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And Mark 11, verses 22 to 24 read, and Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Faith, the anchor that allows us to trust in God's divine providence, knowing that he will work everything out on our behalf. When facing uncertain times, <clears throat> sometimes it helps to see how others face them. We can look at Abraham's journey of faith. Abraham was told by God to leave his home and take his household to an unknown place. Despite the obvious amount of uncertainty, Abraham followed what the Lord told him and packed up his entire life to set out for a new home. Excuse me. Abraham showed great faith in doing this. He could have said no and stayed put in a place he knew well and was accustomed to. But instead, despite the uncertainty of it all, Abraham left his home with just his household and his belongings. We can also look to Joseph for a testimony about having faith in uncertain times. Joseph was in the will of God, exactly where he was supposed to be, which was prison. Despite being in prison, he was serving and being obedient to God, waiting for God to fulfill the promise he made for Joseph's life. This waiting meant that he was in uncertain and unpleasant circumstances all the time, but God was working behind the scenes to bring the promise to fulfillment and Joseph remained faithful in this uncertain season until the promise was fulfilled. In the end, Joseph became the overseer of Potiphar's house. The Psalms provide some valuable lessons on faith in times of uncertainty. They teach us to seek refuge in times of trouble. Psalm 46 verses one to three in the ESV says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. And Psalms 9 verse 9 in the KJV says, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And there are many more Psalms you can read that can inspire faith in uncertain times, such as Psalm 16 and 1, which reads in the NIV, keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. And Psalm 31, 1, which says, in you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. In all, the Psalms is a great book to read when you're facing uncertain times and need encouragement. It's full of inspiring scriptures that can carry you through times of uncertainty and unpredictability. These scriptures assure us of God's steadfast love and let us know that God will work everything out for us. In addition to faith, we have another tool to navigate uncertainty and that's prayer. Prayer can be intensely and profoundly liberating. When we surrender in prayer, we are allowing God to take control. We are inviting his strength and his peace into our lives. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, 8 to 11, <coughs> excuse me, all give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. 
The Bible also says in Romans 8, 26 to 27, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So we see that we can seek the Lord's strength in prayer and he will help us in our weakness. When we're feeling like we can't take any more of the unknowing, we can seek God in prayer. And when the uncertainty is all too much, we can garner strength and peace from prayer. The Bible says in Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Bible is truly a treasure trove of scripture that will guide us in times of uncertainty. You may remember my sermon for, from a few months ago about praying God's promises. Well, that's praying the scriptures. And as evidenced by some of the scriptures I've read in your hearing, the Psalms is a good place to start. In prayer, we can express our fears and doubts and seek guidance and wisdom. In Psalm 34, verse 17, it reads, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. And in Psalms 102, verse 17, it reads, he regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. And finally, in Psalm 11, verse 10, we read, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praises endures forever. As a model, we can look at Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. <clears throat> the Garden of Gethsemane was a place Christ went to pray just before his arrest and crucifixion. It was a time of deep prayer and agony for Jesus because he knew what was coming. While Christ may have not experienced uncertainty, we can look at how he prayed as a guide for us when we are going through uncertain times. In Matthew 26, verses 38 to 39, it reads, Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus knew what was about to happen, and he didn't want any parts of it. But instead of trying to get away or trying to avoid his fate, he relinquished his will to the Father. Again, he prayed in verse 42, saying, My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Jesus certainly didn't want to be crucified, but he surrendered his will to the Father, saying, Your will be done. This is how we ought to pray. When times are uncertain and it seems like we are being tossed to and fro, we can fight the urge to take control of the situation and turn to the Lord instead. Surrendering to the will of God is the only way to ensure that the outcome will be what's best for us. In conclusion, dear friends, uncertainty is an inevitable part of our human experience. However, our faith offers a sturdy anchor in the midst of life's storms. As we navigate the unknown, let us remember the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. May our faith be our compass, guiding us through the uncertain seas of life with courage, trust, and unwavering hope. Amen. <clears throat>